Coons joins us with the highlights. Amber? Eric Bassick is the team to beat in boys basketball. They only have one loss, and that was against the number one team in the state. Eric and Della, I am not tough like Lindsay. <laughs> one fall on the slopes, and I'm sipping hot chocolate for the rest of the day and just <laughs> chilling out. I'm with you, Amber. Let's just add some spice. Family, food, and high school football. Today, it's all about the traditional rivalry game between Stanford and West Hill High School. Of course, this game is for bragging rights, but at the end, it's all about coming together and giving thanks. Adrian Broner always knows how to make a highlight. Hi guys, welcome to the Boxing Boys. I am your host, Amber Koontz. Adrian Broner and Adrian Granados are good friends outside the ring, but inside the ring, there was little to no love. I think of them um, getting rid of Charlie Strong. He brought in a lot of great defensive players, but I think Tom, their new head coach, he brings in an offensive scheme. He worked with Urban Meyer. They're gonna come out strong in the SEC. No we the Patriots, <laughs> Alabama. I can't put my money against them. I mean, that's Floyd Mayweather money. That's easy money. <laughs> that's easy money. This is your pro debut. I talked to you before the fight, and you said that you were anxious but hungry. How do you feel now? I feel good. I, I executed the plan, but I could have done a little better. But first thing I want to say is thank you to Marvin Shula for his promotions. You said that your performance was okay. You showed a little bit of frustration at the end there. Tell me what was going through your mind. Because I was, I was missing too many shots. I don't miss shots like that. And my coach said I had to be more sharp. And I was headhunting too much. I could have went down to the body a little bit. But like I said, it's a learning experience. It's my first time, so I got to learn. And my last question for you is, it is very loud in here. You have a lot of supporters. How does that feel? I said, I feel good. I feel good. Everybody came out to support. I love all y'all who pulled up. People, I got people from down south that pull up. It's all good, man. I love the support. It's all a little over a year ago, Danny Gonzalez and Johnny Hernandez had this arena rocking. Queens and Long Island definitely showed out. Since then, these two fighters have been feuding on social media. Their latest comments definitely tell a tale that they are not friends. Danny saying he will once again have his hand raised, while Johnny is saying, no, 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 I'm going to close the show this time. It's definitely going to be a great matchup. Be sure to comment. We will be interacting with you all night. We want to hear from you. And stay tuned. We will have action in the center of the ring shortly. I was not so struck by his weight like everybody was. Because I felt like when he was getting close in the clinch with Anthony Joshua, that's when it was dangerous. I don't think he adapted well, which I was surprised because they were saying that they were bringing in guys who would move a lot into Andy Ruiz's camp. But clearly, he either wasn't going to training camp or he wasn't adapting. But yeah, right. And it is a draw, Salim. How do you feel about that decision? I feel like I did enough to win. I mean, he, had tough, he, he came to fight. He was a tough opponent. He, he did much better than what I expected. But at the end of the day, I felt like I did enough to come out with the win. I'm highly disappointed with the, with the, uh, with the results, but it is what it is. You said you wanted to lay on the pressure. Do you believe you did that in this fight? I feel like I, I could have did more. I could have applied more, of course. But, um... I said, it is what it is. I'll be willing to come back here and get a rematch and really get this win. Okay, over here to Antonio. You just, you just heard what Salim said about a rematch. How do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm totally in there. I want to go round two, you know. But, you know, it's bumping up to six, eight rounds. You know, I'm coming off a six-round loss. But, you know, uh, like he said, you know, I could have put more pressure on him. I'm, I could have went two more rounds, but, you know, if uh, his manager wants to make it happen and the promoter, then, you know, let's make it happen. Let's get the, what the fans want to see, you know? We talked about this earlier today where you said you want to fight Mexican style and you want to bring the heat. Grade your performance tonight. You've been fighting here at the Paramount and you have a huge crowd behind you. Explain to me this emotion fighting close to home. Um, it's amazing, you know, to just be a kid that's 5-0 and no come in prospect, to have that many people come out, it means a lot. So I just got to keep winning and uh, making them proud. Alex, once again, congratulations. Woodsy, back to you. So what we do is present pride and passion more so than on some of the other big cards. Like I'm looking forward to seeing Salim Kelly, a super middleweight, Fight Night Live veteran. 
What are you looking forward to on the undercard, sir? I'm looking forward to a couple of explosive knockouts and good showcase performances. All right, solid. And now up to Amber Kuntz in the ring. Here at Fight Night Live, we like to shine a light on the parts of boxing that often go unseen. Tonight we're going to see rising stars, we're going to see a pro debut, and we're also going to see a debut of a promoter. And I have the honor of being joined by him. Marvin, what does today mean for you? Welcome into the Sports Edge. I am here in Madison at the Surf Club, where it's not exactly beach weather, but it's definitely football weather for Daniel Han. And there's one section in particular that is really cold, and quiet. I am here with the Thunderbirds quarterback Drew Guterri. You're wearing a very special number 14 jersey. Can you talk about the importance of this jersey and winning on homecoming? Yeah, um, you know, this number represents uh, Stan. Stan Harley, he died uh, a, couple years, uh, a couple years ago. He was very close to me and my family and he's just, he represents something bigger in the community. You help orchestrate six touchdowns, two coming by your feet, dominant performance by your offense and your defense. Give an overall explanation for today's game? I mean, we played as a team for once. For one, first time all season we played as a team. And uh, I started up front. The line did great, and I couldn't do it without them. My last question is for you. You guys are moving to 3-3. Three and three. Yeah. You just beat a 4-1 and one team. Yeah. How important was this game for your playoff opportunities? It was huge. It was do or die tonight. You know, our season was on, our season was on the line, and uh, we, we made a statement tonight. We're still here. Here with head coach John Buck. Coach, Chaminade was able to keep it close with their three-point game. What were you telling your team as a strategy going through this game? In this building and with their system, um, they are never, never a team to count out. You know, um, I knew that coming in. Our coaches knew it coming in. Um, they consistently play us every year. That's a credit to Coach Paul and his confidence in his program. And um, we knew that they were going to run maybe the best offense we'll see all year. And for us early in the season coming off some injuries, um, we knew we were going to be in for a dogfight today. So great credit to them. Their kids, they're not scared of anyone. They made a ton of tough shots. Um, thankfully, you know, we had some big time guys step up like, you know, Zed's performance today. Andre was a little bit quiet tonight. How would you overall assess your team's performance tonight? Yeah, you know, Andre's battling a little bit of the flu. Um, you know, he's a gamer, so he fought through it with the fever. Um, you know, I'm sure he will look back on the film and look at things he wants to improve, but he, you know, suited up and gave us an effort when, uh, you know, he couldn't have um, with the flu. So credit to him on that. Um, and, yeah, he's our engine, so if he's not, at, you know, cooking like he can, you know, we need guys to step up. And Zed and I think Hugo Bergstrom just did a phenomenal job today. Thank you, Coach. I'm here with Zed. Zed, as your coach said, you were able to step up in this game. You had 18 points. What was your overall leadership in this game? Just to push everybody to be the greatest. Um, don't take no plays off and just give – great effort um, just you know make the extra plays rebound block shots make the hustle plays just to get the team to the W so that's all we talked about is just getting the W and playing hard and competing so that's what that's what we did today to, to get that W you guys are a nationally ranked team this was a close game mm -hmm. how much pressure is on you and your teammates to just perform at the highest level it's a lot of pressure because we're number 14th in the country uh, everyone's coming for us and we got to play our best game every night because all the other teams are going to play their best game to try to beat us and knock us off. So, you no, know, just coming in, preparing in practice every day, watching film and just getting ready for the game, it's what, it's what we do. It's, it's, it's a lot, but, you know, we're used to it. Give me two more. <laughs> we all like explosive drills, like box jumps. We like to tighten our butt, use our hips, use our quads, and jump up on that box and get the most explosion out of that workout. Now that causes a lot of stress on our knees. Now to still get the explosion that we get, me and my partner AJ, we're gonna give you an exercise called reverse box jumps, where we're gonna focus on getting that explosion out of your toes instead of your knees. Hey. Hey. 